Just cut it out! Now you stay out of this! Heck Ramsey comes to the rescue of a well-intentioned but hot-tempered young man with mean enemies. We're looking for Matthias Kane. He's armed and dangerous. No, my instinct tells me that boy's not a killer. He'd been wrong before. Well, if I'm wrong this time, I'll be the first to know it. Matthias, don't shoot! Heck Ramsey. Chief. Regarding charges against Matthias Kane, wanted for assault and battery in Clayton, Texas, you are hereby notified that all charges against him were officially canceled. Signed, Sheriff H.E. Cahill. Arnie, you better wake him so we can share in this earth-shaking news. Not necessarily heard the first time. Uh, and I think I know Matthias Kane. Arnie, give me that file, will you? Charges dismissed. He's a lucky man. Or his bark is uh, worse than his bite. moving. Take anything you want, just don't shoot me. Shut up and get on your feet. Turn around, I want to see you in the light. Boy, you're ugly. I know it, but can't shoot a man for that. Shut up, I said. Just stand there. tell you anything you want to know. Just don't kill me. What's your name? King. Good old Charlie King. Ask anybody in these parts. You're lying. I want your real name. But I'm telling you that... Look, I trailed you all the way from Texas, so don't think you can fool me. Now, if you lie to me again, I'm gonna shoot you right here on the spot. Now, say your real name. Charlie King, I swear. I've been prospecting these Atoka Hills for over 15 years now. You got a razor? What? Get your razor out. Now look, if it's my gold that you yeah, want, it's right there in that pack. Stupid old man, can't you understand? It's not your money I want, it's your life. But why? You know the answer to that as soon as you hear my name. Matthias Kane. Yeah, go ahead, play dumb. That ain't gonna help. 
I'm the son of Lydia Kane. The woman you abandoned before I was born. But she died two months ago. And now I'm here to make you pay for all the misery you heaped on her life. I never even heard of her. Do you think I'd believe anything you say? Well, there's only one way of settling this. You start shaving. Sure, sure shaving. Come on, shave! here, but I remember him because he gave me a fair shake. When was that? Oh, seven, eight years back. He didn't say which way he was headed. Well, no, he didn't talk too much. He said he was tired of prospecting and was figuring on settling down, maybe opening up a business somewhere. Where? Uh, Cherokee country over there. He said he, said he heard it was turning civilized. <laughs> There's much chance of you finding that fella alive. If you'd just get my suitcase and set it over to the curb, I, I don't want to get my boots muddy. Sure do, thank you. That you, Heck? Heck Ramsey! Dave, what are you doing in New Prospect? Just traveling through. No, now, you told me a long time ago that you were born in Amarillo, you were bred in Amarillo, and you figured to die in Amarillo. Well, I guess I figured wrong. Well, I thought you were a permanent fixture in that sheriff's office. Huh? You must have been there 30 years. 33, to be exact. Well, they retired me. Give me a badge with my name on it. Huh? Gold. <laughs> you got any plans? Well, I'm just like I said, I'm traveling through, and besides, I want to see what was on the other side of Texas. I got a daughter who lives on a farm in Iowa. Well, what would you be doing on a farm? You're not exactly cut out for milking cows. Well, I could fix fences and plow. No, no, I wrote to you a year ago, told you where I was. Is that why you're here? You want a job? Heck, I'm still good. I can't draw a six year as fast as I used to. But mine's good, my eyes are clear as the best. But you don't have to sell me. <laughs> well, guess I'm welcome to stay a while. Now, where do I go to sign up on your police force? Well, Sam, it's not exactly my police force. You wrote me and told me you was the chief. 
No, I wrote and told you I was deputy chief. There's a man over me. Well, I reckon I can't sign up then. Uh, we won't be working now, together. wait a minute. I didn't say that. Now, let me talk to Stamp. He's young, and he goes by the book. But he's... All right. You talk to that fellow. You tell him about all the rests I made and how I bought all those reforms by Tom I'm, I'm going to tell him every bit of that. In the meantime, you're going to need a place to stay. Yeah. You try Miss Barclays, that's about two blocks down the street. Heck, sure want to thank you. For what? Staying a friend. Did you ever think different? Well, I guess you got things to do. I won't be keeping you around. Eh? I'll stop by later. Hmm? All right. so mixed up, I completely forgot where I was going. Now, the blacksmith's on the same street as Miss Barclays. Come on. Oh, heck, far. I can carry that. You wouldn't let me in Amarillo. You wouldn't let... Dang, look at that. You wouldn't let me carry a whiskey bottle till I was 21 years old, and now I carry what I plead. All right. About to eat my supper. The fellows are welcome to join me. Drab. Didn't you see the sign? What sign? The one over there. <sighs> well, now that's pretty poor for a sign. I guess I must have overlooked it. You're trespassing on private property. Yeah, I'll be moving on as soon as I eat. You'll move on now. Look, I admit trespassing. But that sign's hard to see, and this is the first eating I've done in almost two days. If you ain't out of here when I count five, it's going to be your last eating. You should not have said that. One. I don't like being ordered. Two. Especially by people that I ain't acquainted with. Three. And I ain't moving. Four. And when I say I ain't moving, ain't nobody going to move me. Five. The wildcat. It's against every regulation. Well, you could put him on special duty. We don't have special duty. Every constable works a 10-hour shift six days a week. McDay just couldn't hold up. That man pioneered law enforcement in Amarillo. He cleaned that town up like he was God's own messenger. I never saw a man so dedicated. He taught me everything I know about this. But you're talking about a man as he was 30 years ago. Well, I just can't say no to him. Well, then let me say it. I'll tell him he's just too old. Oh, if you ever said that to him, I'd have to turn in my badge and leave with him. Wait a minute. The other day, Will Bannister, one of the owners of the Emporium, came by and said something about needing a night to dawn security guard. They've had some break-ins recently. You talking about a night watchman? Well, it's honest work that he's suited for. Yeah, I wish you weren't so damn right. All right, if that's settled, I'll go get some dinner. I'll uh, tell Bannister how happy you and I'll be for him giving that job to Sam McDade. Is that necessary? I don't want him turning Sam down. Where's 
trail. What's going on here? Who well, we caught this trespasser on property belonging to the Hobbs Oil Company? He refused to leave and resisted our efforts to eject him. What's your name? He didn't tell us either. Well, come on, son. You're in enough trouble as it is. Don't call me son. Well, then lift your face up and tell me your name without I have to ask you again. Matthias Kane. Where was he doing all his trespassing? Northfield Pumps, Area 6. On time. You can't do that, Heck. You're like a wild animal. Well, I may be, but this ain't no zoo on time. Now, I have told you people about that sign in Area 6. That thing is so grown over with vines, nobody can read it. Oh, come on, Ramsey. We're on the same side, remember? Yeah. But that don't mean my coat has to like it. Turn me loose. Now, your business here is finished. And get on out of here. What about him? He puts one foot in the door. He's my business, not yours. You arresting him? I'm working on it. Good night. when you travel? There's no law against it. Well, it'll be waiting for you when you leave. Where were you heading? We're right here. You carry any other weapons? My ma gave it to me when I was 12 years old to hunt with. I keep it mostly for luck. Hmm. All right, Arnie, he's all yours. What's the charge, Ed? Disturbing the peace, one night in jail. Hmm. Wait just a second now. You won't come over here and empty your pockets. <laughs> do I have to? Will you do it for yourself, or I'll do it for you. Like I said, we got all the officers we're authorized to have, and I'd kind of like you to stick around. Yeah. I figured you was the boss around here, not the second man. Well, I'm always the boss as long as I can quit whenever I want to. You <laughs> think I'll take a job? Sam, it's your choice, and I can't make it for you. Well, it's a nice town. I like these people. I think I'll give it a try. Who do I talk to? Then talk to Will Bannister, John Rhodes. They're the owners. You see them first thing in the morning, tell them I sent you. Mm. Hey, mm. I'll take it unless. Unless what? Something better comes along. Hmm, huh. yeah. I do say so myself. How long you really plan on keeping me here? That depends. On what? On how you like our cooking. You got a job here? No. You got any kin here? No. 
Well, then why come to New Prospect? I'm looking for someone. My father. I ain't heard from him for a while. Kane. Kane, I don't know anybody by that name lives in New Prospect. When did you see him last? His name ain't Kane, it's Ben Willis. I ain't never seen him. He left my mom before I was born. Hmm. Your mom sent you? She died two months ago. That's what I come to tell him. Well, how come that you call yourself Cain instead of Willis? I took my mom's name. She never married. Thanks. If you never saw your pa, how are you going to recognize him? I got an old picture. I found it after my mom died. Well, when do you figure he first arrived in this area? Sometime between 94 and 95. Uh, well, time has a way of changing people's appearance. I'll find him. did you say you are? 66. I had a birthday last month. But like I was telling Heck, I got all my faculties. Sir, I'm in A1 condition. And you say you've known Heck Ramsey a long time. Heck Ramsey? Known him for 30 years. Matter of fact, I trained him. Yes, sir, he come clear across Texas to apprentice with me. I taught him everything I knew. Afterwards, he was picked to ride for Judge Parker's court. Good enough for me. He'll probably fall asleep on a job a lot. Man, his age tires easily. Maybe not. All right. You've got the job, Mr. McDade. Thank you, sir. Uh, when do I start? Uh, how about tonight? We've been having trouble with our back warehouse. Kids breaking in, stealing small items. I can take care of that person. I know how to handle kids. Good, good. You come back at 10, my partner will explain your duties. Thank you, sir. You won't be sorry you hired me. And thank you again. You really think you can handle it? Look at it this way. It can't hurt staying on the good terms with the police. Well, let's get back to the inventory. I've got one of my headaches again.
I understand you had a man in cell block two last night. Yes, sir. Why isn't his name officially listed in our ledger? Because he didn't do nothing that criminal. But you kept him incarcerated overnight. Yeah, I thought he needed some rest and some food. We're not taking in guests. Not a guest. It's Matthias King. We tore up a poster on him last week. I know. I spoke to Arnie. He told me he's looking for his father. Yeah. Yeah. Seems the father deserted before the boy was born. That's why he keeps getting into trouble. He wants to find him real bad. You think he might be tracking down his own father? How old is Kane? 23, 24. Oh. Well, he's legal to look anywhere he wants. Sure. He's legal, all right. What do you intend doing? I told you before, I intend to find the father. Warn him he's got a kid after him. Might as soon shoot him as look at him. And that'll solve the problem. That won't solve anything. But at least the father will know, and then it's up to the two of them to work it out. There you go. Take to anyone reading my cards. We don't. We sure have a lot of useless stuff around here. Yeah, that's a dumb question. <laughs> Would you like one of yourself? Oh, no, I don't want to take one. Uh, I want to give you one. I mean, I got one here that needs fixing. <laughs> sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, could you make it so the, uh, the picture is less wrinkled and the faces are clear? Yeah, I can try. At least my paw can. He's good at that. It'll cost you 15 cents. Oh, not now, when the job's done. Uh, you'll take care, though. It's the only picture I got of my folks. I guess that. Well, how? Well, it's old. They weren't using real cameras much before this was taken. And uh, I can see how you look like your pa. Well, you can? Well, there's, uh, there's only half a face there. <laughs> well, I can see half of yours when you turn your head. Yeah. Are they here in town with you? Oh, uh, no. I mean, uh, my ma's dead. Uh, but my pa's here, I think. You think? Well, uh, that's why I come here. I'm looking for him to tell him my ma died. You see, they, they, uh, they ain't been together since I was very little. Then you didn't see him between then and now? 
Uh, never. But if he's here, I'll find him. I'm sorry. It's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I don't mind talking to you about it. Uh, that's funny, because I usually do mind talking to anybody about it. Do you think that uh, you'll be able to recognize him with just half his face on a picture? Well, I know more than that. Uh, he'd be kind of tall, about 45 or 6 years old. And he laughs booming. Booming? Yeah, you know, big and loud. My mom said that if he thought something was funny, he could, uh, he could laugh like rolling thunder. <laughs> he sounds like a good man. Yeah. Well, uh, when do you think the picture will be ready? First thing tomorrow. Thanks. Uh, where are you staying? Oh, I, I haven't settled yet. I'll come back, though, in the morning. What's your name? I'm Matthias Kane. And yours? Betsy Alexander. It was real nice meeting you, Miss Alexander. My pleasure, Mr. Kane. if I could shoot. What's the meaning of this? Well, it means that maybe my ma is finally going to rest in peace. Excuse me. Just let me in there, please. Thank you. Let me in. Laugh. I want to hear you laugh. It's all right, folks. I'm the guard here. I'll handle this. Get him out of here. Don't worry about it. Thanks, sir. Boy, put that pitchfork down. Stay back! You old fool, don't you realize he's trying to kill me? I'm gonna give you one more chance to laugh. Loud. Ma said your laughter could stop a stampede. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, how's Tyler, Texas, to refresh your memory? Well, how's the name Lydia Kane to remind you? I've never heard that name. You're lying! No, you're him, all right. You're smooth, good-looking. And you laugh a lot. Listen, just like I she said. Where are you? Oh, damn it. You laugh. Laugh. <laughs> laugh. <laughs> laugh, just like my ma said. Louder. Because it's going to be the last sound that comes out of you. <laughs> Again, louder. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, 
Put that down. You stay out of this, Ramsey. This is between my pa and me. That's not your father. Oh, yeah, he is. I've never been sure of it. Yeah, this is it. Now laugh. And tell all these people what your real name is. I, That's I, not Ben Willis. Shut up! I can prove it. How? Put the pitchfork down. No. Hobbs, would you put your hands down? Says who? Would you let me prove it? Now, Hobbs, put your hands down. I'm really sorry. But this fool has got to learn everything the hard way. Now, give me the letter. What letter? The one you got in your inside pocket with the photograph. Well, how'd you... Just give it to me. Frank, a pencil and paper. Well, you ain't tricking me into believing it ain't him. Hobbs. Now, the person that this halfwit is looking for wrote this letter a long time ago. If you're him, then your handwriting should match that pretty close. Well, that's no test. His writing could have changed. Just go right ahead and sign your name the way you always do. Ooh. That's right. Hamilton Hobbs, the president of Hobbs Oil Company. Can't write his own name. Never had any schooling. Doesn't know how. Now, does that convince you he ain't your pa? He's gonna... Now, you! You listen to me! This ain't the backwoods, and you ain't no damn vigilante. The people in this town are protected by law. You understand that? Leave me alone, Ramsey. First, you apologize to Hobbs like a man, not like an animal. Now, come on. I'm sorry, Mr. Now, I, I... I'm sorry, Mr. Hobbs, but that don't gotta stop me from looking. You won't press charges? Just get him out of my sight. All right, come on. What are you gonna do? Where are you taking me? I haven't decided yet. Now, come on! We heard the ruckus. Heck, what happened? Uh, Bannister Rhodes, uh, just a minor skirmish. He the one making all the trouble? Yeah, but uh, it's all settled. You were arresting him? No, Hobbs decided not to press charges. But surely you're not gonna let him walk out of here scot-free. No. He's in my custody. Hey. All right, go on about your business. Come on, move! What got them so steep? They're businessmen. They don't like anybody to give their store a bad name. Oh, they could have done nothing to me. Well, I can. I can lock you up right now. Is that what you're going to do? Don't tempt me. Now, you came on with that big story about how you wanted to find your father, to tell him that your ma died. You didn't bother to tell me that what you really wanted was to kill him. I lost my head. Just like you did in Driftwood, Clayton, Oakford. You know about that? Yeah, and I know why they probably dropped the charges. Because you came on like a big old country boy looking for his law's papa. Now, it wasn't like that. You hate him so bad you can't even see straight. You had any sense if you just wanted to find him, you'd be looking right over there. Why? Because right in there is a record of every person who ever bought any land here since the time this town started. Now, don't waste your time. I already checked. Well, did you find him? Well, I found three like him. What do you mean? Well, what are their names? Ah, uh, I dug them up. I'll check them out. And if one of them is my pa? Then I'm going to warn him about you and your crazy temper. And after that, it's up to you two. Now you are really wasting your time. I already had those records locked up. You've got no right. They're public. Yeah, but that reading matter can contribute to a felony. Now, you think you're smart, Ramsey. But I got other ways to smoke the man out. Now, you go ahead, you find him, warn him, do anything you want. That still won't stop me. Next time, I won't be holding a pitchfork. You got a room yet? No. Well, get one. Else I'm gonna arrest you for being a vagrant. Watch 
out. Don't tear it. When's the last time you saw me tear a photo I was working on, young lady? Never, I guess. Who'd you say left this? Oh, someone off the street. A young man. Why do you need it so fast? It's a family picture, and he happens to be very sentimental. <laughs> oh, you always have to laugh at everything. Oh, I'm sorry, Betsy. It, it just struck me as funny. <laughs> Sentimental. Pa, stop it. It's not funny. Oh, now, wait a minute. My laugh had never bothered you before. Yeah, well, it does tonight. <laughs> Where was this taken? Someplace in Texas. Tyler, Texas. Oh, yeah. Must have been in the old Red Dog Saloon. You've been there? Well, a long time ago when I was herding cattle down to El Paso. I never knew that. Well, well, there's a lot of things you don't know about your old dad. Guess you think I've never been anything but a Photoshop owner. What else have you done? Plenty. The fact of the matter is, I had me a lot of travel and adventure before I settled down. A lot of ladies, too, I suppose. Why not? I wasn't too bad to look at, and there were plenty of young girls willing to give me a second glance. I was quite the ladies' man. <laughs> but you know, I'm traveling up to Centerville. I'll be gone overnight. I heard you were going to talk to uh, 200 people. I'm not sure how many people will turn out. There is a lot of interest in the police system I've set up here. And a few politicians uh, hanging around in the background, hmm? Maybe. Meanwhile, you're in charge. Well, everything will be here just like you left. Including the finest cane? I hear you had another run-in with it. That's true. Why isn't he in jail? I didn't arrest him. He attacked Hamilton Hobbs with a pitchfork. Hamilton Hobbs refused to press charges. Without that, I can't arrest him. It's becoming a public nuisance. Chief, sir. I'm going to take you over that window, and I'm going to point out 12 citizens in this town who causes more trouble every day than Matthias Kane. What's so special about Matthias Kane? I'm trying to stop a senseless killing. Didn't you once tell me you lived around Tyler for a couple of years? I have a feeling there's something you're not saying. Hmm. Oliver. I am not the boy's father. I did not know Olivia Kane. See you tomorrow. Hmm. He beat my brother sick, and he's about to get his. Let's put the whip down. Not now, 
I am wearing a badge, and you are getting yourself in more trouble every minute. Well, I don't care about that. They had policemen down there in Clayton, Texas, where he beat up on my brother. Those charges were dropped. Not by me, they wasn't. Stop! I don't suppose you ever saw him before. No, I never saw him before. Well, his brother is one of the people that you thought was your father. Now, you can't make trouble and keep it all in one place. I don't expect you're going to press charges. All right, it's over. Get out of here. Go on. Go on home. That's your horse? Yeah. Come on. Mr. Kane? Hey, that wasn't my fault out there. You know, I never saw that fellow before. I believe your photograph is ready. Excuse me. What's up? Customers come for this. Oh, good. I'll explain what I did. Oh, no, no. Don't bother. I can do it. You keep working. Here you are. That'll be 15 cents. Look, I, I don't know why you're so mad. You act like you're sorry that man didn't tear my head off. That's none of my business. I'm just very busy right now. Hey, your dad really did a fine job. I'd like to thank him if I could. Um, well, he can't be bothered right now. I'll tell him you were satisfied. Well, I ain't all that satisfied. I was hoping I could talk to you some more. Not just now, but maybe sometime when you wasn't working. I don't think that's possible. Well, it seemed possible yesterday, even likely. Well, I'm sorry you forgot the wrong idea. Well, my idea was all right. It still is. Well, that's not what just happened out there. It's something else, isn't it? Or someone else. Oh, sure. Should have figured a pretty girl like you wasn't waiting around for someone like me to show up. Oh, thanks all the same, Miss Alexander. It's been a pleasure. ask you a couple of questions? Oh, go ahead. What about? Well, according to the ledgers in the county recorder's office, you homesteaded here in the Cherokee Strip about 15 years ago. So? Hmm. And then about a year, year and a half later, you asked for a license to run this telegraph office, and you listed Philadelphia as your birthplace. That's right. Uh, Welburn, Texas. Uh, on the homestead application, you gave that as your residence. I made a mistake. You also signed your name as Benjamin Albert Jennings. Uh, there's no law against a man changing his name, is it? Well, that depends. See, some folks do it because they don't like their name. And others do it because somebody else don't like their name. Now, how was it with you? I had my reasons. Such as? I don't remember. Hmm. Well, I'll just uh, wait here until your memory gets better. Heck, you're really putting me in a spot. <laughs> I'm uh, listening. Uh, my father back in Texas was very rich. He owned the town I was born in. He gave me everything I always wanted. I was their pride and joy. Well, then the, then the war broke out. I tried to enlist. But my father found out and paid, paid off someone so they wouldn't call me up. 
Uh, that didn't stop me. I stole a friend's birth certificate, ran off. I saw a lot of battles, but I wasn't hurt. Oh, the name Pete Jonas was lucky for him. Kept it ever since. And um, your father? For all I know, he's still looking for me. He was a stubborn man who demanded I follow him into the banking business. <laughs> well, me, I'd, I'd be nothing without my wireless electricity. Is that the information you were looking for? Heck, uh, my family, my friends, everybody I'm known as Pete Jonas. It's a name I'm proud of. Nobody knows nothing about that other part of my life. Pa. Come touch your food. Guess I lost my appetite. All right, what's going on? You've been sitting around here moping, staring at me for two whole days. I turn into some kind of freak all of a sudden. I do not know whatever you are talking about. No, there's something on your mind. Now, you tell me. You've never had any secrets from each other, and we're not going to... you at a bad time? No, you don't visit often enough. How about a drink? Well, anything to be social. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, Betsy, I'm disturbing your dinner. No, sir. You're welcome to join us. Well, thank you. Another time, that'd be fine. That's your mother. A fine-looking woman. <laughs> yeah, none ever prettier than my Margaret. Excuse me. Come up. Did I do something dumb? Oh, no. She's just been a little edgy all evening. I don't know why. Maybe it's that thing about uh, her mother being prettier than any other. That might have upset her, the idea that there were others. Maybe. Well, there were. <laughs> I'm a man, ain't I? Yeah. Well, a good looking horse like you, you must have had him waiting for you all over the place. Oh, I could tell you some stories I could. San Antonio, Dallas, mm -hmm. a few other places. How'd you make out in Fort Worth? Oh, Fort Worth. Now, that's a prairie paradise. And I imagine you just ripped them up in them small towns. Did you ever get into a little place called Tyler? Oh, the old Red Dog Saloon in Tyler. Yahoo! Mm. I knew a filly there. Oh, my, she was pretty. Lydia Kane was her name. You ever run into her? Lydia Kane? But he came. Oh, can't say I did. Oh, those small town girls, they came and went like passing clouds in the sky. I'll tell you something, Nick. Something I never told no other man. Don't laugh at me, will you? I won't laugh. Sure, I. I did my share of chasing, soft talking. Me and my Margaret Jane. We went to bed pure on our wedding night. And this is a rain. Me and my darling wife.
couldn't have been Vince. And a lucky one. It's you, Heck. I got to talk to you. Well, it's after 10, and we're closed up. Yeah, I only need about five minutes. All right. But you'll have to wait for me, because I got a few things I got to do. Today. I told you we're closed, Heck. I do for you. More case of what I can do for you. I'm listening. Well, you remember that kid that went after Hobbs in the store yesterday? What about him? Well, he came into New Prospect a couple of days ago with one thing on his mind to find his father and kill him. What's that got to do with me? Well, see, he didn't know who to look for. His ma and him had been abandoned before he was even born. All he had was one name. Ben Willis. check out, but I figured all along was going to be you. How? Well, first off, Joe Yance's picnic last summer, I heard you laugh. And you could drown out a tornado. But mainly how I put it together was from the business application you made when you first opened the store. What about it? Well, originally you called the place the Golden Nugget. And in the last letter you wrote to Lydia Kane before she bore your son, you spoke about coming home with nuggets in your pocket, only you'd misspelled it that time, too. Why didn't you go back and marry her, like you said? I couldn't. Why not? I couldn't, I... 
I don't want to say more on the matter. I couldn't. All right, you found me. What happens now? You gonna tell the young man? Well, it's not my place. It's yours. What happens then? My job was to find you. Let you know what's going on in that boy's mind. And the rest of it is up to you. I will kill me. Maybe. I never knew she was pregnant. I swear it. Well, that's the version your son has carried since he was born. Now, after I struck pay dirt, sold my claim, I headed toward the Cherokee Strip. My idea was to find a growing town and get settled and send for Lydia. But I stopped off in East Texas, you know, to get new supplies. I killed a man in a bar room. He was drunk. Started picking on me because I couldn't hold my whiskey. Took it as long as I could, and then I booted him out the door. Thought that was the end of it, but he came back and called me out. We went for our guns. And I won. Hmm. Well, it sounded like self-defense. No, oh, not in that town. He was born there, and I was a stranger. They brought in witnesses who said I threw on an unarmed man. They sentenced me to 20 years. Six years later, one of the witnesses finally admitted perjury. I was given a new trial. I was acquitted. I changed my name and I headed out this way again. As for Lydia, well, I figured her being so warm and loving, she would have married and forgotten me. Over the years, I've, I've been shedding that whole episode like it was pieces of dead skin. My name, my background. Trying to wipe the whole thing clean in my mind. But I swear, heck, I never knew about any child. I'm not the one that needs convincing. Where is the boy? I'll have him up here in a half hour. Oh, heck. What's his name? Calls himself Matthias Kane. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yes. I'm sure. And heck, thank you for this. Oh, uh, you can leave the door open. What for? I was rude to you earlier. I made a mistake. I thought you were someone you weren't. Can we please be friends again? Please? Ah, uh, sure. Well, now, uh, if you're all shook out, Matthias, I, uh, I'd like to talk to you. 
Can't you see I'm busy? Yeah, but this is important, and I think Miss Alexander will excuse us. I understand. See you soon, Matthias. Now, why don't you take off your apron? I think you and I should go for a walk. Ramsey, I ain't going no place with you. Hmm. Well, that's fair. I just thought you might like to meet your father. agreed to meet with you and tell you his side of everything. Well, what's his name? Where does he work? First, we make the rules. Then we'll set the meeting. Now, you've got to swear to me that you're going to meet with him and hear him out, and there won't be any violence. Look, I don't have to swear nothing to you. He, him? Uh, that's true. All right, all right. I, I swear to you, no violence. Father's name is Will Bannister. He's one of the owners of the Emporium. We met him yesterday. And he's right up there in that office. Uh -uh. You remember, this is not going to be an easy meeting for him either. Ramsey told me about you. Did he tell you about me? Yeah, he told me who you were. No, no, I mean, why? The reason things happened the way they did. What difference does it make? Well, I didn't know about you. I, I didn't even know you were alive. You knew where my mother was. I was in prison. Well. They, they let you write letters in prison, don't they? I was going to be there a long time. And she would have waited. The kind she was, I couldn't do that to her. So what'd you do instead? Let her raise me on her knees? Cleaning other people's dirt for a living? Looking through garbage for something to eat? Well, I didn't know. I, I thought she'd meet somebody else and be happy. She was a very young and pretty girl. Did she hate me as much as you do? She didn't know how to hate. I did love her, you know. Never was, was there anybody else for me. How did she die? Too much work and not enough to eat. The doctor said it was lung fever, but I know what it really was.
I came here to kill you. I know. Matthias. Dying now or a little bit later never meant much to me. Till now. I don't want you to ruin your life. Oh, you're starting to care about that a little bit late in life, ain't you? Not for me. I just found out I have a son. You know, when Ramsey told me, I felt peaceful. That sound funny? Peaceful and... and proud. Matthias, I, I can't give you back all those years. But I am a successful man in the world's eyes. And I would be happy if... if you'd let me share what I have with you. What's the matter? What is it? What's the matter? See that, did you? No, but I was hoping you did. Check. Now, wait a minute. Your bishop was not there. Well, what do you mean my bishop wasn't there? Just Where else would it be? It would... You want a suggestion? No, my bishop was here. Evening, Oliver. How was the trip to Centerville? Mission accomplished. I suppose that means a few more votes in the kitty. How are things here? Quiet. That's unusual for a new prospect on a Friday night. How'd you do with Matthias Kane? Why don't I ask his old man, Will Bannister? Bannister? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised you walked out in that main street. You might see the two of them walking down there together celebrating their reunion. How'd you ever manage it? Well, it was a combination of good luck and bad spelling. You mean you actually got them to meet face to face? See the knife before? Yeah. Belongs to Matthias Kane. I guess he figured the gun would be more efficient. How ironic. The boy had only known he could have saved himself a killing. His father would have been dead within six months anyway. What does that mean? Well, Bannister had a tumor in his head the size of a stone. I'd been giving him painkilling drugs, but nothing helped. He was a goner. Hmm. Arnie, what do you got? Chief? I found a witness that saw a man running away. Hello, Chief. Mr. Sampson? Yeah. I was sweeping up my shop, closing for the night when I, I heard shots. 
I ran outside just in time to see this young fellow coming down the stairs. He had a rifle and he was really moving. Did you recognize him? No, I never seen him before. But he was heading due north. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, get back to headquarters. Alert the other officers. We're looking for Matthias Kane. He's armed and dangerous, but I want him picked up tonight. All right. That's been wiped. Just grab it. Easy with this one. I'd appreciate it the next time you get a good instinct about someone like Matthias Kane, you swallow it. the last time you saw him? When we closed for the night. One of us always stayed late to count the receipts. Tonight was his night. Yeah, well, the money's gone. You have any idea how much you collected tonight? Well, I, I estimate it was around $800. You, you see, we ran a special sale today. Who else knew the combination? Well, just, just Will and myself, as far as I know. I, I guess he must have been surprised and couldn't get the safe closed. Chief, have you got any suspects? A very definite one. Will Bannister's illegitimate son, Matthias Kane. His son? I didn't even know he had a son. Maybe it would have been better for him if he'd never known either. Chief, Will Bannister was not only my partner, but he was a very close friend. I'd like to go over to your office right now and post a reward for $5,000 for the apprehension of his killer, dead or alive. Let's go. You coming? No, I wait with Doc. An open safe, man shot in the back while waiting for a wild, unpredictable kid who hated him. I'd say it was open and shot, Heck. Yeah, well, I'd still like to see the bullets killed him. All right, I've only got two hands. Come on, help me carry him back to my office. Well, I've got to find somebody. Thought you wanted to solve a murder. Doc. I just hope there haven't been two. Too, then you're not ready for that kind of a life. Well, I keep telling people I'm 66. Truth is, I'm near 70. Crazy part of the whole thing is I'm 
Mad as a rattler, whoever done this to me. Now, what happened? Well, I just finished making my rounds and heard these shots, and I come out to check this rear yard. Heard footsteps running toward me. It was dark, I couldn't see anything, and all of a sudden, ooh. Heck, I heard shots. Yes, Sam. Will Bannister's dead. Oh, my God. It's my fault. Well, come on, I have to get back to Miss Barker. You, you got a murder to solve. Murder bank is off. Hey? Hmm. One thing puzzles me. What? I was hit from behind. Yeah, you told me that. But don't you see, I, I was standing in this spot right here, and I was looking off in that direction. Well, that means that your man couldn't have come from the street. He had to come from out of that door right there, the back door to the store. Does that tell you something? Yeah, it does, Sam. You know, thank you. Is it true? Sophia's killed him. Well, I don't know, but they are hunting him. He didn't do it. How could he have? And Will Bannister, he didn't even know him. I told him last night that Will Bannister was his father. Then it's you. You're the one who's to blame for what happened. Why did you have to meddle? Why couldn't you just leave well enough alone? Now, wait a minute. You think I did it for me? Yes! It was important to you. You knew it. I'll get the extra ammunition. Get him trapped and shut out of the Hobbs oil field. Turn fire in over an hour, Chief. That's trouble. These folks sure smell that reward money, though. I don't know. I think the best idea is to rush him before everybody else does. What if he's playing possum? He could kill at least five of us before we got as far as the end of the pipes there. Oliver, I got an idea. What? If you and Arnie will sit on these folks out here, I'll go in and talk to him. What if he kills you while you're talking to him? No, my instinct tells me that boy's not a killer. You've been wrong before. Well, if I'm wrong this time, I'll be the first to know it. All right, five minutes to test your instinct. Then I'm testing mine. Pass the word. Nobody fires again until I give the signal. Matthias! Don't shoot!
Now, Matthias, don't you shoot me. I'm just coming in to argue. so I can watch you and them at the same time. Sit down. You're stupid. Why is that? Well, a crowd rushing me, you, you might have had a chance, but uh, this way you're gonna die first year as hell. Well, if you're done scaring me to death, uh, I got some questions. Why? Everybody knows I killed Bannister. You know, he's dead, that's for sure. But uh, the rest of it, I'd like to hear from you. Like what happened up there in that office. How'd your knife get there? Well, after you left, I, I got to remember in all the years of hating him. So I, I went back and I found my knife. I didn't know what to expect, what he'd be like. And what was he like? He, he was gentle. He was almost shy, just... Standing there wondering about me like I was wondering about him. He, uh, he told me about being in prison and all. How he never knew about me. I didn't want to believe him. I, I wanted him to be mean and selfish like I'd been seeing him all these years. Yeah. But he was speaking like he was real glad to see me and how he felt bad about my ma dying. He wanted me to be with him now. And then, all of a sudden, uh, he got sick. He, I just helped him take some pills, and I went out to look for a doctor. Well, I was almost all the way down the stairs when I heard a shot. And what happened then? Well, I started back, but before I got up there, I heard another shot. When I got to him, he was already dead. He didn't see or hear anybody? Just people shouting in the streets. And I, I realized you knew I was going to see him, and... I just panicked and I ran. Move over there. Yeah, I knew this was a trick. Now I'm gonna ask you to do something that you ain't much gonna like. Give yourself up. You're crazy. Well, if you did kill Bannister, I'm just as guilty as you for setting him up. Why should I trust you? Because if you don't, you're going to let your father's killer to walk away free. You know who killed him? I think so. But I'm going to need some time. I don't know why I'm trusting you. Well, it's my charm and good looks. Hold your fire! What do you say to do? What brings you here at this time of night? Well, Mr. Rose, I thought I'd just to save you a trip. I guess you heard it was me that captured Matthias Kane. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Oh, congratulations. Come on in, come on in. If anyone's entitled to that reward, it's certainly you. How about a drink first? Go ahead, help yourself. No, thank you. Uh, just the reward will do. <laughs> well, at least Will can rest easy tonight as killer's been caught. Mm. Too bad we couldn't recover the stolen money. He probably got rid of it when he saw the police close again. I suppose the business all goes to you now. Yeah, and what a headache that is. <laughs> well, you're not here to listen to my problems. $5,000. Why 
want to count it? Now, what are you doing? You ever hear the expression that uh, money talks? Yes. Well, that is what I'm doing. I'm listening with my eyes. Listening for what? For a voice from the dead. See, Will Bannister, your partner, he was a sick man. He had a brain tumor, didn't have long to live. A few months. Uh, so? Well, now, if somebody knew about that illness and was planning on, on inheriting the whole estate, well, it might have thrown a big crimp in that fellow's plans to have Will Bannister's son turn up all of a sudden. Are you trying to imply that I... No. I'm not implying anything. Money's doing all the talking. Talking about what? It's saying that this money was in the office safe the night Will Bannister was murdered. His hands were ink-stained, and there are smudges of ink on these bills. You're either drunk or crazy. I wasn't even there. Well, now, I figure that you went back, went inside the store, up the inside staircase, and you saw and you heard Will and Matthias talking. And you knew they were father and son. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. You don't know what you're talking about. When you saw that gun of Will's inside the door, you must have, must have thought that was the end of all of your problems. Oh, yeah, you reached out, you grabbed that gun, they didn't see you. You fired two shots, Bannister was dead, and you had a perfect suspect to cover you. Oh, and I suppose I, uh, I just walked in and took the money from the safe. No, no. You went back down the inside stairway, back down into the store, and you waited until Matthias was gone. Then you came back up, you wiped the gun clean, dropped it, and then you took the money. And you learned all that from just gazing at the money? Yes, sir. This money and the money in the office safe have something in common. I am prepared to swear to that in a court. Raise your hands. Stand up. I was right. If it makes it any easier for you to die, you're right. I had to kill him. I'm, I'm in debt. The business was his, the accounts. After he was dead, they belonged to me. Not some backwoods kid that wandered in out of nowhere. Come on. You and me are going to take a walk. Wait a minute. What about my equipment? I'll dump that after I finish with you. Now, you're not setting a very good example for your employees, particularly that night watchman you hired to protect your property. Do you think I care about that? No, but I think he does. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot all about my arthritis. <laughs> hey, did you really see Bannister's ink stains on these bills? Well, just Trace is not enough to get a conviction. Well, why didn't you tell Rhodes that you saw something the same on Bannister's money, the money he paid you tonight? Well, I did. You did? Yeah. Benjamin Franklin's face. Oh, I know. You 
got any plans? No. Guess I'll head back to Tyler. Hmm. What's in Tyler? What's here? Your father's business, for one thing, if you want it. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, I ain't no businessman. And I ain't going to school. And I ain't settling down. Goodbye. Bye. Aren't you going to stop him? He'll listen to you. He's turning his back on a successful business. Not yet, he ain't. <laughs> 